Hello, everyone. My name is Emily, sharing a story that's both tough and triumphant. I never expected to mesh well with my mother-in-law, Sophia. From the beginning, she was always sharp in her criticisms, often targeting my cooking, style, and even my career. Despite my efforts to let her comments slide and maintain my composure, it wasn't easy. Our relationship hit a new low during a family gathering a couple of years ago. Sophia, having had a bit too much to drink, turned to me and said, Emily, I never really thought you were good enough for my son, but I guess we can't all have everything we want, can we? Her words stung and the shock on the faces around us only deepened my embarrassment. I hadn't done anything to provoke such a remark. I had always been a devoted and caring partner to her son, Bruce. Feeling humiliated and hurt, I excused myself and retreated to the bathroom, where I shed tears for what felt like an eternity. Following that day, I made a conscious decision to distance myself from Sophia, engaging with her only, when necessary, at family events. This decision significantly improved my mental health. Now, looking back, I sometimes feel a sense of accomplishment for handling things the way I did, even if I do give myself a metaphorical pat on the back now and then. But more importantly, my story is about sticking by the people you love, even when faced with unwarranted adversity, and about the resilience of love over familial approval. My husband Bruce has been my steadfast supporter throughout all this, and our bond has only grown stronger. And what about Bruce's take on all of this? He was aware that Sophia and I weren't exactly the best of friends, viewing our tension as just the usual mother-in-law and daughter-in-law friction that many couples experience. However, he was oblivious to the hurtful comment his mother had made that night, and I chose not to tell him. Although honesty is key in a relationship, I couldn't bear the thought of breaking his heart. Bruce adored his mother, and revealing what she said could potentially devastate him. It might even wreck the relationship he had with her. Having grown up without a strong relationship with my mother, I wanted to shield him from similar pain. A few weeks later, Sophia invited us to a dinner at her house, which was also a work event. You two need to come to my party, she insisted over the phone. It's important, and I've also invited some family members to impress my colleagues. Before Bruce and I could respond that we were both listening, she had already hung up. What do you think, babe? Bruce asked. Honestly, I preferred to skip it. Well, I mean, I think I'd rather sit this one out, I replied. Oh, come on, Emily, you're no fun anymore. You never want to go out to family functions. I know you don't like my mom, but is it that bad? He questioned, unaware of the full story. I explained that large groups made me uncomfortable, especially since this event was more for her work colleagues. But Bruce persisted, thinking maybe this was Sophia's way of trying to make amends. Come on, let's help her out. It sounded like she wanted you there. Maybe this is her way of extending an olive branch. Please come with me. How could I say no to my loving husband? Okay, babe, let's do this. Little did I know that the night of Sophia's big dinner event would be the last time I would hear from my mother-in-law in the way I had come to expect. The evening that unfolded turned out to be a significant turning point in our relationship. Bruce and I arrived at the event looking sharp, as Sophia had specifically requested. It was clear from the crowd that this was a significant gathering, Sophia was likely hosting it to curry favor with her superiors, perhaps to secure her retirement plans. She seemed determined to impress everyone there. As usual, I steeled myself for Sophia's covert jabs, which she delivered so subtly that she could easily deny them if anyone called her out. We all know someone like that, don't we? Navigating these situations was always challenging. While I could often spot her snide remarks, I'm sensitive and tend to shy away from confrontation, usually just brushing off the negativity. That night, however, 
as I prepared for an evening of sidestepping unpleasant comments, something unexpected happened. When I encountered Sophia for the first time in a long while, she greeted me with unexpected warmth. Oh, my darling Emily, how have you been? You've been MIA. I'm so glad that you came out this time around, she exclaimed. Surprised, I replied, Oh, I didn't think you noticed my absence. Nonsense, she continued. I'm so glad Bruce was able to convince you to come. You look stunning, by the way. Red is definitely your color, darling. You should wear it more often. Her kindness threw me off. Had something changed? Why this sudden niceness? While part of me wanted to believe in her sincerity, years of her past behavior made me skeptical of this abrupt change. As the evening progressed, Bruce and I found ourselves being showcased to Sophia's colleagues, almost like trophies. Bruce, ever the charismatic speaker, seemed to inherit that trait from his mother. The conversations flowed smoothly, making it easier for me to relax a bit. Sophia's co-workers turned out to be genuinely sweet and kind, which was a pleasant surprise. As the night continued, I began to cautiously enjoy myself, though part of me remained on guard, wondering about the real reason behind Sophia's sudden shift in attitude. At the event, amidst all the familiar faces, one in particular caught my eye, Paul, a friend I hadn't seen in quite some time. His presence was a welcome sight. Paul, how are you? I greeted him warmly. Hey, Emily, it's been a while. Can I talk to you? Paul's tone was unusually serious, which immediately piqued my concern. Why was the normally cheerful Paul so somber? He led me to a quiet spot outside, away from the buzz of the party. Paul, what's going on? I asked, growing anxious. Mace, I have some news, and I'm sorry in advance. I thought you needed to know what happened. He said, looking genuinely troubled. A chill ran down my spine. Paul, I'm getting scared. What is it? I'm sorry for keeping you in suspense. It's just that... Well, it's not easy for me to say. Part of me is embarrassed because it took me so long to bring this up, he confessed. Oh, Paul, if this is about that crush you used to have on me, it's all water under the bridge. Please don't feel embarrassed about that. I tried to reassure him. What? Oh, no, that's not it. But now that you mention it, he trailed off, then quickly refocused. No, it's not about that. It's about Aunt Sophia. Oh, well, tonight she's been quite charming, actually. She even complimented my outfit. I was starting to think maybe she was trying to make peace, I shared, hopeful that Sophia was turning over a new leaf. Yeah, well, I don't think you'll feel the same way after seeing what I have to show you, Paul said gravely. He then showed me a video he had recorded on his phone. It was Sophia, tipsy and unguarded, talking to one of her friends in the kitchen. I could hear her say, and her nose is way too big. She should seriously consider a nose job. And that dress? I knew she didn't have any fashion sense, but this is just horrendous. I don't know who told her that red is her color, but they should be arrested. Hearing Sophia's words felt like a punch in the stomach. Just when I thought we were making progress, this revealed her true feelings. It was a stark reminder of the reality behind her seemingly kind facade at the party. The revelation from Paul left me stunned, but sadly, this type of shock was becoming all too familiar. The severity of Sophia's malice surprised me anew each time, though I had grown somewhat accustomed to her critical nature. Earlier that evening, I had inadvertently overheard her talking maliciously about me as I returned from the bathroom. I tried to gather as much context as I could while staying out of sight. I'm so sorry for all the awful things she said about you, Paul apologized. It's okay, Paul. Unfortunately, I'm kind of used to it by now, I replied resignedly. But that's the problem. You let her walk all over you. I'm sorry I didn't show you this earlier, he continued, showing regret. There's nothing to apologize for, I assured him, trying to ease his concern. I'm not talking about this video, Paul said, hinting at something more. There's another important video that I think you need to see, 
I hid it from you all these years, thinking you'd prefer not to see such an embarrassing moment. But considering what I saw tonight, I'm glad I kept it. Paul then began to show me another video. At first, it wasn't clear what he was trying to show me as it seemed like a casual recording of him talking with a relative. But in the background of the video, I could faintly hear the words that haunted me. You know, Emily, I never really thought you were good enough for my son, but I guess we can't all have everything we want, can we? Suddenly, the camera panned toward the source of the noise, revealing me looking visibly upset and Sophia smirking in my direction. I hastily exited the scene, unaware of the recording, while Sophia stayed, her expression smug. The air was thick with tension as she continued to speak dismissively about me. Oh, come on. We were all thinking it. I can't stand that girl. I don't even know what Bruce sees in her. She's so ugly, and I doubt she even knows how to be a good mother. The video captured her continued rant until Paul, perhaps sensing the situation had gone too far, intervened. Okay, Auntie Sophia, let's get you some water, he suggested, gently leading her away as the footage came to an abrupt end. This video was a painful but crucial piece of evidence, showing Sophia's true feelings in an unfiltered manner. It was a hard pill to swallow, knowing that her recent kindness was likely just a facade. I was unaware that Sophia had said all those harsh words after the incident, and that's why Paul hesitated to show me the video. It's a lot to take in, and I realize now I should have told you sooner. Maybe things could have been different. I was hoping that maybe Sophia was starting to accept you, but after today, it's clear nothing has changed, he explained, regret evident in his voice. Despite the sting of knowing that others were aware of Sophia's true sentiments while I was in the dark, I appreciated his intention to protect me. Thank you for telling me now, though. Better late than never, I guess, I acknowledged. Paul nodded. I'm going to send these videos to you right now. You can decide what to do with them, but I think you should show them to Bruce. However, I felt a sudden surge of determination. Tired of being passive and overlooked in the face of Sophia's blatant disrespect, I decided it was time to take a stand. Actually, I have a better idea, I said, clutching my phone with the newly received videos. I strode confidently towards the living room, where Sophia was amidst a presentation to her colleagues. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry, but this area is off limits for now, she tried to dismiss me. Trust me, I have some very important information that I think your co-workers would like to hear. I countered firmly. Oh, then, by all means, share what you have to say. Is it about my hard work ethic or my leadership skills? Sophia smirked, unaware of what I was about to reveal. It's even better than that. It shows the real you. I replied, my voice steady. Marvelous. Then, by all means, connect your phone to the TV. Oh, you guys, isn't my daughter-in-law just darling? She made a whole presentation about me, Sophia boasted, thinking she was about to be flattered. The room filled with murmurs of anticipation. At that moment, Bruce entered, having received my urgent text. Hey, I got your text. What's going on? Hey, love, I needed you here for this. It's very important, I said, my resolve unshaking. Bruce looked puzzled but intrigued. Bruce, can you believe it? Your wife made a lovely presentation about me. Everyone, come and see this. Sophia called out to the gathering guests. As the living room became crowded, I took a deep breath. Well, here goes nothing, I murmured, my fingers poised over the play button. Sophia, yes, I know you've never liked me, and honestly, I don't even understand why. All night, you've been acting like we're one big, happy family. With that, I played the video, revealing Sophia's true colors in her own words, in front of all her colleagues and family. The room fell silent, waiting for the fallout. Despite Sophia's earlier compliments, I knew the truth about her feelings towards me. As I prepared to reveal this truth, the atmosphere in the room shifted. People started to look and sound confused, 
shifting uncomfortably and murmuring among themselves about the drama that was about to unfold. Bruce, just trust me on this, I whispered to my husband as he looked on, bewildered. Facing Sophia, I said, Sophia, I understand you don't like me, but why be so cruel? I don't know what you're talking about. Give me back the remote. You shouldn't be present anymore, Sophia demanded, reaching for the remote. Not until I'm finished, I insisted, my voice steady. Remember how you said you loved my dress and that I look good in red? Yes, of course, she replied, a hint of uncertainty in her voice. Then why did you say this? I pressed the play button on the video that Paul had shown me earlier. It was taken that very evening. Sophia's harsh words echoed through the room, and though I had heard them before, they still stung deeply. The room gasped in shock. People were wondering why she would say such things. Bruce's eyebrows furrowed, a look of anger spreading across his face. I was talking about someone else, obviously, Sophia blustered, looking around the room desperately. However, I was the only one wearing red that night, making it blatantly obvious she was referring to me. Sophia's face flushed with anger and confusion. What are you trying to prove here, Emily? She snapped. Everyone, please don't mind this mishap. I believe Emily isn't well. You should go lie down, darling. Sophia tried to deflect. Oh no, Sophia, I'm quite fine. I feel very liberated. I responded calmly, holding the attention of everyone in the room. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that's not all. Let me present to you something that occurred approximately four years ago. Some awful words were said to me and about me, and I thought it best to share them with you. I played the second video, the original one with those damning words that still haunted me. As the video played, the expressions of shock and disgust multiplied. Bruce looked especially upset, his face a mask of barely contained rage. When the video concluded, a heavy silence fell over the room. All eyes, including mine, were on Sophia. You see, everyone, this is the real Sophia, I said, turning to face the crowd. She might seem kind and warm, but don't be fooled. She can be as sweet as apple pie to your face, but the moment you turn around, she's ready with the sharpest insults. This moment of unveiling wasn't just about exposing Sophia. It was about reclaiming my dignity and showing that I no longer would tolerate being disrespected in silence. Throughout the evening, I had the pleasure of meeting many of you, and it's clear that you are part of a respectable and legitimate business. I urge you all to consider carefully how you support or promote Sophia. Because, based on my experiences, I would find it difficult to continue collaborating with someone who has demonstrated such ugliness and cruelty. As the room absorbed my words, Sophia frantically scanned the crowd, desperately seeking any ally willing to buy into what was likely fabrications designed to salvage her reputation. Well, you see, the thing is, that day I was very drunk, Sophia stammered, attempting to excuse her behavior. Someone from the crowd called out, Yeah, but a drunk mind speaks a sober heart. Who said that? Reveal yourself, Sophia demanded, her voice tinged with panic. Listen here, Emily, I don't know what's gotten into you, but you need to apologize to all of my guests for your behavior, Sophia insisted, trying to shift the blame. No, I think it's you who needs to apologize, Mom, Bruce interjected firmly, breaking his silence. Until then, he had been a quiet observer, but now his frustration was palpable. You treated my wife like this? Bruce, baby, don't baby me, Mom. What is wrong with you? Why would you say such awful things? Sophia attempted to deflect, Oh, come on, everybody, I was joking. Yes, that's what it was. It was all a prank. That's what you kids do nowadays, isn't it? Stop lying to us, Mom. You're only embarrassing yourself even more. You are a pathetic woman and a sad excuse for a colleague and a mother-in-law. I'm glad that everyone sees what I see now. What do you have to say for yourself? Bruce's voice was stern, his disappointment evident. At this, Sophia began to cry, 
still trying to shift attention away from me and onto herself. She was seeking sympathy, but no one was inclined to offer it. Her desperation was palpable, and as her facade crumbled, the true extent of her bitterness became apparent. In a last-ditch effort to regain control, she lashed out at everyone, including her co-workers, accusing them of being trolls for not believing her. However, her outburst only worsened her situation. Spiraling, Sophia watched as, one by one, people, including her supervisors and superiors, began to leave the room. It was clear that Sophia's behavior not only isolated her professionally but also personally, as the true nature of her character was revealed to all. Sophia's actions at the event had severe consequences. Not only did she lose the trust and respect of those around her, but she also jeopardized her financial security. Bruce told me the next day that he overheard some colleagues saying that Sophia would be fired immediately for her gross misconduct. Sure enough, she was let go and received only a modest pension, far less than what she had hoped for. After the disastrous event, and once everyone had left, Bruce confronted his mother. In front of me, Paul, and a few other family members who had stayed behind, he demanded that she apologize. Sophia, a woman who had always prided herself on her assertiveness and control, was completely mortified. Being forced to take accountability for her actions was her worst fear realized. She apologized, albeit reluctantly, and then hurried off to her room. Following her dismissal, we wanted to reach out to Sophia. Despite everything, we felt it was right to offer some support. She was still family after all. However, Sophia cut off all communication. She didn't return any calls, not even Bruce's. Months passed, then half a year, and eventually a full year. Still, there was no word from Sophia. It was quite the fall from grace for someone who always had so much to say. Now, humbled by her circumstances, she became as quiet as a mouse. It was a sad, albeit self-inflicted, turn of events. How pathetic it seemed that someone who once held so much influence chose isolation over making amends.